Okay, in today's video, we're going to fit out this 3018 Pro with this 800 watt spindle and we're also going to add this um, extra travel Z carriage. This gives us about 75 mil of um, travel as opposed to 45 mil of travel on there. Um, it can be extended as well with a slightly longer lead screw and then that would give you 100 mil of vertical alignment but I think um, 70 will be enough for now uh, on there and um, it's probably a bit crazy to put this on but um, that's what we're going to do. The current spindle is as you can see very um, cheap, nasty, the bearings are not very good in there. I could just remake um, as others have done on other channels, we could just remake this carriage uh, 3D print it or we could uh, use this machine to cut some plates etc to remake this but again we've only got 40mm of travel or 45mm of travel uh, on this carriage um, and it's it's just not very good, it's, it's quite poor etc um, yeah not very good the other thing um, is we could buy uh, a metal version of this carriage um, with a 52 diameter spindle holder already on it. Um, you can get those online now. However, um, they are still quite expensive. Um, I think they're around about, in the UK, around about £100 uh, for the metal version. Um, and all that does is change the plastic bits to metal basically. You still have these. Um, 10 millimeter bars on either side and you still have 8 millimeter bars in here on there so that's why I want to change it to this so this has uh, a much stiffer construction there's no play at all in this one and um, we're on 10 millimeter bars as well on here uh, which makes it a little bit stronger uh, we've got a bigger Z motor on the top but um, it's still a NEMA 17 so it's uh, not going to be too much different to what we have now. Um, I have 3D printed this holder already so we can get away from uh, a heavy metal holder that we did have or supplied with this part. This Z mo motor holder is uh, around about £35 UK uh, from AliExpress. I'll put the links below uh, where, they, where they get them from. And the motor was about £70 including the uh, 110 volt transformer which is on the back already of the machine. Now as I said before this weighs quite a lot more than this one and it's also much bigger and it also comes out further on here so actually fitting it out onto this 3018 Pro is going to be quite difficult. Uh, I did try it with just putting some of the round linear bearings on the back like this one's uh, to go on here and uh, what I found was that the weight of this was uh, kind of twisting these bars like this and we ended up with a with a dish cut underneath which isn't very good um, if you want a nice flat cut it doesn't work. So what are we going to do? Well we're going to recut some of these pieces around and we're going to swap the rails over to 12mm rails and we're going to use these SBR um, 12s rails to sit inside there instead and these should give us much more strength. Um, I'll actually show you on the computer in a second the uh, actual design that we're going to do, how we're going to cut it out and then we'll get cracking and cut out um, on this machine. So we'll actually use the machine, we'll use this current setup to cut the parts out that we need to remake for this setup. So over to the computer. So this is the design we're going for. Uh, what we're going to basically do is we're going to remake uh, these side pieces, these two side pieces uh, on the CNC. We're also going to make um, this block in the centre which is um, going to be used to hold the Z mount and we're actually going to replace the aluminium extrusion here. The reason we're going to do that is because we can't get the aluminium extrusion to mount to the uh, bearings on the rails so uh, we'll just make this piece of wood as you can see um, there's quite a few holes uh, in there and we'll just use an M5 by 20 uh, bolt to go through here use an allen cap head um, in there and you'll see that in the assembly later and as I said 
before we're going to use these um, SPR12 linear rails um, and we're going to secure those to a backboard uh, which we won't cut on the CNC we'll just use a chop saw or a circular saw to cut those and we'll just make sure we get it square in there and we'll also uh, back that onto the aluminium extrusions uh, as well so that they um, give some extra strength to it. Um, I've provisioned here two extra holes on either side so that if necessary we could put in uh, extra extrusions across the back as well and these are positioned uh, these extra holes are positioned so that the inner um, holes of the bear, of the linear rails will actually line up with them so we can go straight through. So at the moment we've got the top holes go straight through the um, wood into the extrusion and kind of sandwich it all together and then the lower holes just go through the wood and then we've got a, a nylock nut on the back to secure them in but as I said we could put an extra extrusion along there if we wanted to if I felt that it wasn't strong enough then we could do that. The wood is secured in place uh, uh, with these three countersunk wood screws at the end. Uh, I'm going to put those in right at the end of the assembly because um, the main thing is actually we're going to sandwich it through to the extrusion through each one of these bolt holes anyway in the in the linear rail so that shouldn't be any issue it's just an extra uh, security. It probably might help with a little bit of sideways flex and on this side we're going to do it with just two of these holes because the third would have been uh, underneath the um, x-axis motor um, and uh, that would have obviously caused a problem, we wouldn't have been able to get that in. So yeah, uh, one thing that's not shown on here is we're going to cut another square of just a thin piece of probably 9mm or even 6mm um, wood just to go on the back of here to hold the electronics boards because we have moved these two rails further apart so the electronics case won't actually fit on there so we'll just cut a piece of wood and simply screw the electronics to it uh, and again we can, we can have a look at that um, afterwards when it's done. Other than that I think um, you know we're, we're good to go. I've put an extra bracket on here for the motor speed controller um, and uh, yeah we can sort of go you know, up down across and hopefully this will be give us uh, everything that we we need. Okay, so we've done the cutting out, we've done some sanding, uh, we've made them um, you know, smooth to handle and uh, there's our new back piece we have here. Um, we have our two new side pieces um, which have also been uh, milled out and we've also got our 608 bearing um, ready to go in the end um, to support the end of the, the shaft. Um, we've also got here our um, back plate I've pre-drilled where the rails are going to sit and that's as we saw on the computer that's going to be across the back just in front of the two extrusions and we're going to reuse those two extrusions that we have uh, on the back of this to support it and we're actually going to screw straight through here um, into the into the T-nuts inside the, um, the extrusion to hold it all together. Hopefully that will give us enough um, support um, and also as we said on the computer we've already pre-drilled these two small uh, the two inner um, holes here uh, for two extra pieces of extrusion if we need them but obviously we'd have to purchase those and um, I'm trying to avoid that if we can so uh, at the moment we'll see how that goes but uh, I've uh, prepared for it just in case okay so the next thing we need to do now is to strip down our existing um, system we need to take the side pieces off, the back pieces, we're going to take the electronics board off. I have actually cut, which we didn't show on the computer, uh, another board just to fit on the back because we're actually going to be widening these um, rails out a little bit so the electronics board won't, um, won't fit to them anymore. So we'll just need to um, put a board across the back to bridge that gap and then we can screw the electronics board to the, uh, to the wood panel instead. Uh, other than that, we'll get breaking down and rebuilding. Let's go.
So all broken down as far as we need to. I'm going to leave the base frame as it is uh, and then we're going to reassemble now uh, the uprights with the uh, new backboard. We're going to reuse those two extrusions um, as we said before. Give them a quick clean first. Um, yeah, so those will be going behind this board like so. Um, and as I said, we need to have a new board on here uh, just for the electronics board because it's uh, we've taken these a bit wider. So let's go, start reassembling. Okay, so a few weeks have passed uh, since we did the last video and since we uh, had a look at the, the, the redesign on the PC um, and we've had a few issues which I'm happy to say now we've completely overcome those issues. So I want to take you through a few changes that I've made um, on, along the way um, and a quick apology for not really showing the, um, the, the assembly video but uh, I think the frustrations of trying to uh, trying to get it to work probably uh, overcome the f the, uh, the the videoing of it. Um, okay, so the few changes that we've made. So um, we've made these um, uprights longer now. Instead of having the the cut back in them, um, we've made them go all the way. In fact, they actually go slightly past the back of the uh, the existing. Um, frame now um, and that really is to accommodate um, this extra torsion box um, that we've added to the side of this. What, we've, what I found was um, with, the, with just these uprights as per the, the design on the PC that this um, we had quite a bit of flex here um, side to side on here um, I also swapped from um, regular hardwood uh, plywood to birch plywood um, in here and I think if I'd have just changed just to birch plywood I've probably been okay anyway but to be 100% sure uh, both sides we've um, increased and made this um, kind of torsion box set up and now it's absolutely solid um, and that's also enabled us to, to spread the fixings out um, over a, over a larger area as well to get more stability into the machine. Um, then I have the same on the other side. Um, if I can get this round so you can yeah. see at the back. So this is just the extra piece of wood that we cut. Um, that's the same as it was before um, for the uh, electronics just to mount to on here. Uh, as I said, we split these extrusions and made them wider. Um, we've also cut out this little slot here in the um, in the backboard and that's just so I can access the motor screws so if I need to swap the motor out or change motor I don't have to disassemble everything to get to it uh, on here and then the 110 DC volt, uh, volt DC power supply for the spindle itself is on here and I've made this small bracket up on the end here to um, give us our spindle speed, uh, spindle control, speed control, um, and it also has a, a little sensor on here um, which can just detect our rotation speed and that gives us our RPM up here so I know what RPM we're running at. Um, on the actual um, Z axis, you see we got rid of the um, metal part on here. I found a, a problem with this, um, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, so we changed it to this uh, 3D printed part, and um, in the 3D printed part, I've actually got four linear bearings, top and bottom, uh, in there, and then they're just secured with these little tap screws 
on the bottom and on the top they get secured in with the um, with the lead screw um, ring. The issue I had with this is that um, there's only one set of bearings on either side so you've only got two, one on either either side of there um, and these type of linear bearings are very very good at stopping movement in this direction and in this direction so in kind of x and y directions what they're not very good at is stopping movements in kind of twisting directions so by having two of these bearings on one shaft which is what we've done here we've created effectively two contact points which which then stops that rotation as well so this is a much um, better controlled um, sort of uh, from from like a rotational point of view so that's just good um, you'll also notice <laughs> we got rid of the 3d printed um, bracket for this and I've gone back to the metal one and the reason for that is this motor does get quite hot and um, if you uh, if you leave it with the plastic one you are kind of insulating the the motor um, and by insulating the motor it means it gets even hotter so I was getting up to nearly nearly 70 degrees with this motor when it was running on only for about 10 minutes of running um, however with the metal block um, that actually acts as a heat sink uh, and the motor I can run now for over well over an hour and I still haven't got it above sort of 45 degrees it stays nice and um, uh, controlled temperature as I said I've got this little optical sensor which I've added on um, and I've wired that with an old USB lead because it needs to be screened because there's a lot of electrical noise coming off the um, off the power supply which can interfere with it and this is just a small OL, uh, OLED display up here um, which can give us this speed so as we turn the um, speed up One other final thing that I've done as well as we've included in here the limit switches which I've um, added and you can see there's some uh, ones inside as well and, and we designed this block um, to have a little um, step in it here to trigger those sensors just as it gets to the top and bottom and um, I did fit the longer lead screw in the end and just rise, rose this motor up on the original um, stanchions there so this motor's uh, uh, so I've now got um, nearly a, well just just about a hundred millimeters of, um, of Z movement but I don't have a hundred millimeters clearance under here anyway so um, that clearance kind of depicts the maximum depth now that I can put it onto here um, so yeah very happy with it now very good getting very good quality um, cuts from it uh, since the upgrade and um, looking forward to making more parts now so I hope you enjoyed that um, apologies that we missed a little bit in the middle but the frustrations of um, some of the issues that we had uh, got the better of me a little bit um, but we've got it all sorted it's nice and solid um, the only thing now is that the, there's, there's probably more movement up and down in the bed on the bed rails um, so I think in the future I think there'll be a, a modification coming again to uh, swap out the uh, these um, ten millimeter bars underneath to uh, to these kind of rails, uh, maybe twelves, maybe sixteens. We'll we'll decide that in the future. Okay, great. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.